white markers, they're not just great for lettering. They are also great for covering up mistakes or adding highlights or accents to your coloring pages. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you my top 10 tips for getting the most out of your white pens. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm here to teach you how to be more creative every day. In my last video, I compared all the white pens I could find to work out which ones were the best to use on coloring pages, on paper, on washi tape, and a few other mediums as well. Today, I'm gonna to show you some tips and tricks to get them working the best for you. I've also created a written version of this on my blog so you can see each step and you can find out more about the markers I am using. Before we get started, remember to like this video, press subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to know every time I put out a new video. So my first tip is to choose the right pen. Now in my previous video, I tested all of the white pens that I had and I compared how they all went on colored pencils, on markers, on both Copic, Sharpies and Tombow markers and on gel pens and on washi tape. And I discovered that some of the pens that worked fantastic on the markers worked terribly on the colored pencils. So check out that video that can show you which pens are perfect for whatever you're going to do. If you're doing a lot of colored pencil work, then you might wanna choose one of the ones that did better on the colored pencils. Out of my last video, these were my favorites. I had the Pentel Hybrid Gel DX, which I was a big fan of. My Sakura Decorese was very nice. The Uniball Signo, in the video, I actually reviewed one that was about four years old and I've since bought another one and it definitely ranks in the top. It is amazing. I also had a paint marker. Uh, the Delita Neo Pico Line White was my favorite paint marker at the end of it. So in today's video, I'm going to mostly be talking about tips to do with white gel pens, but a lot of those tips also apply to the white paint markers. They are fantastic for doing highlights. You also want to decide what size marker you want because some of these have a very thin line and some have a very thick line. So you might actually like to have a few in your range for different options. And again, in my last video and blog post, I detailed all these pens so you can actually see which ones are the right size for the project that you're wanting to do. Tip number two is always keep a scrap piece of paper with you and draw on it first. It helps to get the ball rolling. It makes sure that it runs smoothly and it gets the ink moving evenly so you don't end up with any big blobs or missing lines. It's just a great idea and I actually like to do this throughout my work as well. Tip number three is use light pressure and work in small sections at a time. If your pen starts skipping or doesn't work as well, go back to your scrap paper, rub it on your hand and have another go. As long as you keep doing little sections at a time, you should be able to keep a smooth flow even if you're working on something difficult like colored pencils. So tip number four is go slowly. It will give you a much thicker, more vibrant line. It really gets a lot more gel on the paper. And as you become more comfortable with your pen, you can start to experiment with your speed. You can start to work a little bit faster and you can actually start to use that speed to create different lines or tapered lines for things like stars. Tip number five is to let your work dry. Don't lean on the areas with your hand or it will smudge while the white ink is still wet. That's the same whether you're using a gel pen or a paint marker. So make sure you let it dry completely before you go over it for a second coat or with anything else or even resting your hands on it. Tip number six, if you are wanting a brighter white, wait for your work to dry and then you can go over it again in a second layer. Now, tip number seven is something I personally like to do whenever I'm coloring, because sometimes after you've put in hours of work on your page, you don't want to ruin it by adding something new if you're feeling a bit uncertain. So what I do is I scan it in and I make a copy first, and then I can work off my photocopied version, which obviously isn't the same ink. It's not the same final page, but it gives me a chance to do a test run before applying it to the final page. So you can try different methods, you can try different outlines, you can try doing things with your white pen that maybe you're not feeling brave enough yet to do on the final page. If you're really clever, you can even print it half size, that way you're not using up as much ink in the process. So tip number eight is don't go overboard. Remember you can always add more, but you can't take away. So keep it simple, use your white pen in moderation, 
And again, as we said in tip seven, make a copy if you want to do something extravagant so that you don't mess up your original piece. Remember, less is more. If you do make a mistake, don't panic. Instead of smudging it everywhere, just wait for it to dry. And with some markers, you can actually scratch it off, especially on top of the wax pencils. Even if it doesn't scratch off, it's okay. You can go back over the top of your white marker with your original medium, whether it's pens or pencils or whatever. Look, it might take a few layers, but you will be able to cover it up. So please don't panic, but definitely try scratching it off. I was quite surprised at how easily my white pen scratched off of my pencils. Now for my 10th tip, I want to talk about storage. Now, I looked everywhere on the internet for this because I've never really been sure. Do we store pens upright? Do we store them horizontally? Do we store them with the nib down? Now, when it comes to gel pens, there are so many opinions. A lot of people are saying, store them down. Other people say, don't store them down, you'll wreck the nibs. Other people say, store them up because they're pressurized and it doesn't matter. Other people say, store them flat because then it'll stop all the ink getting air bubbles and stuff like that. At the end of the day, I could not find any exact advice from any of the manufacturers that gave a clear answer to this, which tells me maybe it doesn't matter as much as what people think it does. Because if all of these artists use different approaches and are convinced that their approach is keeping their gel pens lasting long, maybe they all work. Maybe there is no secret to storing them properly. The one tip that I will say is whatever you do, make sure you keep the lids on whenever you're not using them because that will help them to stay sealed. It will help them not to get exposed to air so that the gel doesn't dry out. And to finish up today's video with my final tip, if your gel pen does get clogged like my good old trusty four-year-old Signo, go back to the scrap paper, keep working away at it, keep scribbling until you can get some movement out of it. Otherwise, you can also try cleaning the nib. Often it is a case of the uh, gel just drying up on the nib. So you can do this just with a cloth. Um, if that's not enough and you still can't get it working, you can give it a slight tap on the paper, but please don't shake it a lot or don't tap it too hard because you will damage the nib and shaking it might actually create some extra air bubbles. So just give it a light tap with the lid on. Keep trying to run it on the scrap paper. If that's not working for you, try it on your hand, try it on some wood that can also get it going sometimes. And if it's still really not working, you can also try cleaning it by putting it in some warm water or putting it under the steam of your kettle. Or I've even heard some people suggest that you can use a very little amount of rubbing alcohol on the tip to try and get rid of that clogged up ink on the end. Now, as an extra little note, I've heard some people recommend if the whole pen is dried up that you can heat it up or that you can clean it out. Look, these are approaches that I personally wouldn't recommend, but you are welcome to try them. Obviously, you're doing that at your own risk because trying to melt a pen can end very badly, as I'm sure you can imagine. So I'll leave that to you if you want to try some of those other methods. But rubbing it on the paper and trying to clean the nib is definitely the best place to start. And hopefully that will solve your clogging problems. And if you want to show us what you've been doing with your white pens, please head over to my free Facebook group. I will put a link in the description. I would love to hear from you and see what you're working on. If you have any other tips that you'd love to share with us or questions that you have about using markers in different scenarios, please pop it in the comments below and I will do my best to help you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please take a moment to like and subscribe and turn on notifications and check out some of the other videos that I have for you on my channel.